Hey everybody, Rachel here from ChemKid2 and we are back with our next chemistry tutorial. Today we will be talking about significant figures. And I know no one really likes significant figures, but we are going to talk about the three rules that make a number a significant figure. And by the end of this video, it'll be so easy that you'll just love working with them. So here we go. Accuracy, precision, and significant figures. Now there are two things you have to keep in mind when you are reporting numbers for a science experiment or a math problem or anything like that. Your first one is accuracy. And accuracy is how close to your original number your secondary number is. For example, 7.26 is much closer to 7.25 than 7.45 is. Because 7.26 is 0 0.01 away from 7.25 and 7.45 is 0 0.20 away from 7.25 so 7.26 is much more accurate than 7.45 is. Your second thing that you have to keep in mind is precision and precision is how detailed a number you get from whatever device you're using in your experiment. For this one we have 7.25 and the number 7. Now 7.25 is much more precise than the number 7 is because it goes out to the second decimal place whereas the number 7 doesn't go out any decimal places. So 7.25 is more precise. And that leads us to significant figures. And there are three rules that you will use to decide whether a number is significant or not and we're going to look at those next. Rule number one. The number you're looking at has to be a non-zero number. Now this is pretty easy to understand. As long as it's any number in between 1 through 9, it's significant. So if we look at our example here, we have a few non-zero numbers. So we have 6, 1, and 6. So since those are our non-zero numbers, we know that this number has at least three significant figures. So now we're going to look at the next rule. Rule number 2. If the number that you're looking at is a zero, and it's in between two other sig figs, then that one will also be a sig fig. So for example, in our number, we have a couple of zeros. The last one isn't in between any other sig figs. But this first zero is in between the six and the one, which we already determined were sig figs. So that means that zero is significant as well. Now we're going to look at the last rule that we can use to determine whether a number is significant or not. Rule number three. This last rule also has to do with zeros. So in your number, if you have a zero that is at the end of the number and it's to the right of the decimal point, it will be a sig fig. So in this number that we've been looking at, we have one zero left. Now we can see that it is at the end of the number because it doesn't have any digits after it. And we have our decimal point right here, and our zero is to the right side of the decimal point. So this zero is also significant. So we can tell that in this number, we have five significant figures. Now we're going to study these three numbers and see if we can find how many sig figs they have. So if we look at our first number, we just need to follow our three rules that we learned and we'll be able to find how many sig figs. So rule number one, any non-zero number. So in this number, we have a three, a two, and a two that are all non-zeros. Rule number two, any zero that is in between two other sig figs. So we have two zeros in this number, and obviously this one isn't in between any numbers. This one is in between two numbers, and we decided that they are significant, so this zero is also significant. And then rule number three, any zero at the end of a number that is to the right of the decimal point. This zero is obviously at the end of the number, and we can tell that it's to the right side of the decimal point. So this zero is also significant, meaning that this first number that we looked at has five sig figs. Now if we look at our second number, 
We're just going to do the same thing, follow the three rules, and find the sig figs. Rule number one, any non-zero digit. Number six is our only number that's a non-zero. Rule number two, any zero that is in between two sig figs. We do have many zeros in this number, but none of them are in between two sig figs. So according to rule number two, none of these zeros are significant. And then rule number three, any zero that is at the end of the number and to the right of the decimal point. Now this zero is at the end of the number, and here's our decimal point, and it's to the right of the decimal. So this zero will be significant. Now what about these other three zeros? We don't have any more rules that we can look at to see if they're significant or not. So that means that these three zeros are not significant. So the second number has two sig figs. And now our last number. Even though it may look really easy, numbers like this are the hardest ones to figure out. But we're just gonna do the same thing, follow our three rules, and that's how we find our sig figs. So, rule number one, any non-zero digit. So we have our six, which is a non-zero. Rule number two, any zero that is in between two sig figs. So we have two zeros, but neither of them are in between another sig fig. So neither of those zeros are gonna be significant. And rule number three, any zero that is at the end of the number and to the decimal point. So if we look at our two zeros, we do have a zero at the end of the number, but we have an imaginary decimal point there. And this zero is to the left of the decimal point, so we can't count it as significant. So in this last number, we only have one significant figure. So that is how you find significant figures in numbers. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that you are masters of sig figs now. So you can let me know in the comments below this video what other subjects you would like to have tutorials on. Um, my next video I'm going to be doing will be a continuation of this video and I'll be showing you how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with significant figures. But other than that, I am completely open to other chemistry subjects that you would like a video on. I'm also in physics now, so if you have physics problems that you want a video on, I can do that too. So let me know in the comments, or you can like my Facebook page at ChemKid2, and you can message me on there, let me know what other videos you want, and I will do my very best to make a video for you. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.